it's winter and it's polar vortex winter right now and I'm having power shifting withdrawals welcome back to the laboratory since the last video this little channel has gotten a lot more popular for whatever reason so welcome aboard to a bunch of new subscribers of course more is always better so don't be afraid to hit that button down there if you're not already subscribed and as usual, I encourage and I appreciate comments, and there were a lot of those lately too. So it's become kind of difficult for me to stay on top of all of them, but keep them coming because there was some great feedback and I learned things from you. So it goes both ways on the learning. Hopefully, I've got the audio issues worked out on this video too. Let's see. So four weeks became four months, but I finally got my replacement gear from Liberty so I can get the Doug Nash Trans and the Mustang back down to just one neutral gear again. While I was waiting, I had a look around inside the transmission to inspect things and I saw that the lugs on fifth gear were wearing pretty thin. They normally wear with use and the edges get rounded off, but you can usually square them up again with some careful grinding and in fact, the Doug Nash manual gives some pretty specific instructions on how to do just that. But mine have worn down beyond repair again and the slider is worn out too. So I decided to send my spare fifth gear, which you know had the lugs worn out on it as well, out to Liberties and have it converted to a face tooth engagement system and that's where this video comes in. I wanted to quickly explain and show the differences between transmissions with synchros, pro shift or face tooth engagement systems. If you're not sure how manual transmissions work in the first place, well check out my previous video um, up here uh, where I did the autopsy on this transmission after I broke it and towards the end I get into explaining and showing how manual transmissions work. For all three types of engagement systems, they all use sliders and hubs, but how, how they tie the main shaft gears to the main shaft is where things get different, and that's what I wanted to show in this video. With a street transmission, you use synchronized engagement systems to minimize gear clash during shifts. You want smooth, quiet shifts so grandma is going to be happy. How that's accomplished is by adding a blocking ring between the slider and the gear and putting a conical surface on the face of the gear that the blocking the blocking ring can rub up against as the engagement happens. If you think about it, the transmission main shaft, which is the output shaft, so RPM is determined by vehicle speed. The gear speeds are determined by input shaft speeds, which is going to be engine RPM dependent. So during a shift, you ideally don't want the vehicle speed to change, but for an upshift, you want the engine RPM to drop as you engage the next gear. So the slider, which is spinning at main shaft speeds, is trying to engage a gear that's spinning slower. So there's going to be a collision or a clash. If you can get the gear to spin up to the same speed as the slider, then the slider engages smoothly and quietly, just like grandma wants. How we do that is by pushing the blocking ring, which is splined to the inside of the slider and thus spinning at the slider speeds, onto the conical friction surface, which then spins the gear up to the same speed as the slider. So everything is ideally at the same speed and you get a nice synchronized engagement. Problem with this system is the time required for the blocking ring to do its job. It takes time to spin the next gear up to the slider speeds and that time is taking away from our drag strip performance. So synchronized shifts tend to be too slow for us performance-minded folk. Early on, some clever guys figured out you could just leave out the blocker rings and get a quicker shift. Yes, there would obviously be lots of clash and crash, but that didn't bother us as racers. What bothered us were lots of missed shifts because there wasn't enough room for error in getting the gears to engage at the differing speeds especially at high RPM. So the solution to that problem was to grind off every other or even more engagement teeth on the gears and remove some of the splines in the slider. This was known as a crash box for obvious reasons. The gaps in the gear teeth and the gaps in the splines on the sliders created bigger windows of opportunity to get the gear successfully engaged during a quick shift at high RPM. A byproduct of this system is unfortunately a bunch of backlash in the system because of the gaps in the teeth 
and the, and the spline, so it's not really street friendly that way. Plus, it seriously weakens the transmission as you reduce the number of engagement teeth and splines. If you think about it, all the power that your transmission is transmitting is going through these tiny little teeth. And if you get rid of a whole bunch of them, well, then more stress and more load is going through fewer teeth. So the ProShift system took that same crash box idea, but now beefed it up with bigger, thicker lugs on the gears. Okay? And the edges of these uh, lugs were cut at, fa cut at angles to try and help the engagement happen. Because um, again, we're trying to do this at different speeds and at high speeds. But effectively, things are still crashing into each other. So the edges get worn and rounded off, and the splines and the sliders get worn off uh, as well. So you can grind these things a couple of times to get the shape back before they're completely worn away. And there's a little bit that you can do on the sliders as well. But in my transmission, in fifth gear anyway, the, the lugs are getting quite well worn. And the fifth gear slider, which is still in the transmission, um, the splines are worn away uh, pretty bad. So with the face tooth system, we now put the gear engagement teeth on the face uh, of the gears and on the face of the slider. Again, we've got big windows, okay, so it's going to be easy engagement. The advantage of this system is bigger, stronger engagement teeth with increased stress area. So the transmission can handle more torque and things tend to last longer before they need repair. Now, dedicated racing transmissions are designed around the repair aspect, so the face engagement teeth are usually easily replaceable assemblies like this one. With a street or pro shift transmission that's been retrofitted to face tooth, you would machine off these teeth and then you would weld on uh, a face tooth uh, assembly like this. As it gets worn off, then, well, you would have to machine it off and weld on a new one again, but they are still uh, replaceable. In my Doug Nash, fifth gear is actually splined onto the input shaft, so I could get the lugs machined off my fifth gear, and I could just buy a splined face tooth assembly so no welding was required and when this wears away I just buy a new one and slide it on. In theory that's what was supposed to happen. Uh, of course it's been a couple of videos since there's been major fail so here we go back to Ed's usual fail. Uh, this gear won't come off this input shaft uh, and neither will the bearing and neither will the snap ring. This whole assembly has fused itself uh, together and with my five ton press and heat and shocking cool, uh, shocking cool liquid on the uh, input shaft, um, I couldn't get this thing apart. So probably going to have to order a whole new input shaft and there goes my budget out the window to do this again. But anyway, in an ideal world, uh, this thing would just slide off, the new gear would slide on, the face tooth assembly would slide on, I'd pop the snap ring on there, throw it back in the transmission. Um, replace the fifth reverse slider with the phase two slider, ideally in the right direction, and we'd be off to the races again. Um, so, more fail that I've got to deal with. Anyway, so there's our different shift engagement systems. So, there you go. Now you know the difference between synchronized transmission, pro-shifted transmission, and face tooth engagement systems. And my vintage Doug Nash is one gear closer to being a modern racing transmission with me converting fifth gear into the face tooth engagement system. Maybe next winter I'll pull it back out again and upgrade the rest of the gears to face tooth as well. And maybe I'll redo the bottom end of the Mustang engine with those ARP rod bolts too. But for 2021 racing season, this is the budget that I have to keep right now. Next up is softening the clutch a little bit more to keep this trans alive, so watch for an upcoming video on clip signs. But that's it for now, just a short video this time on gear engagement systems. Thanks for watching, see you on the next one, and remember, be kind, the world needs it right now.